Hello, ACCA Performance Management rock stars. Steve Willis here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pass your performance management exam. We're going to look at the tricky topic of learning curves. I'm going to explain it from the beginning. I'm going to show you how it's calculated. Then I'll show you how to use those principles when we solve two questions, an easier one and a trickier one. Okay, so let's get started. To understand the learning curve, let's look at a process and let's pretend I'm unfamiliar with it. I've never done it before. Let's imagine I'm making dumplings for the first time from scratch. Okay, so I'm in the kitchen. I've got my materials ready. I've got a stopwatch and I've got Microsoft Excel open. And I'm going to start recording the total time when I complete my unit. So I'm running the stopwatch and I'm pressing the lap button at certain points. So I make the first dumpling, I press lap and it took 100 seconds to make the first one. Now I press lap when, when we do number two. So when we've completed two, I press lap and I see that the total time is 160. Not one, not 200, but 160. That means the second one went faster than the first, didn't it? The second one actually took 60 seconds. The first one took 100. Now I make number three, I make number four. And now after I've made number four, I press lap on the stopwatch and I see that the time is now 2.56. Okay, then I make more dumplings. And when I get to unit number eight, dumpling number eight, I press lap on the stopwatch. So I've made a total of eight dumplings and the total time is 409 seconds, 0 0.6, 409.6 .6 seconds. Now that I have some data, I plot that in Excel. And look at this beautiful graph that we have now. And if we extrapolate, right, the gradient off of the first dumpling, it would look something like this. Something like that. Look at that. It's not a straight line, right? There's a downward sloping curve happening there. That's telling us that the time per unit is decreasing, okay, at a steady rate. That is a learning curve. We've now, we're now observing the learning curve in our process. And this is a powerful force. Imagine that we're a big company. Imagine we're Foxconn producing millions of electronic components. And if we want to give a quote to uh, one of our customers for the, the cost of producing 100,000 new smartphones or whatever, we want to understand the real time per unit. We don't want to go off the time that it takes to make the first one. Okay, so that's the learning curve. So let's look at this again. The time to make one was 100 right there. Then the time to make a total of two was 160, right? So that's the time for number one. So number two was really just 60 seconds. That's the total time to make two. Then we jump over here, total time to make four, and that's the 256. So look at that, we're going faster and faster. Then we jump up here, number eight, total time there was the 409, okay? So the time per unit is decreasing as we make more and more dumplings. Now that we have our data, let's work backwards and get the average time per unit. And if we divide the total time by the number of units, that gives us the average time per unit when we make that quantity. So the average time when we make one unit is 100. Now, if I copy that formula down, average time per unit when we make two is 80. The average time per unit when we make four 
is 64. And the average time when we make 8 is 51.2. So look at this. The average time per unit, we're observing a perfect learning key curve here. Every time production doubles, we can observe the average time per unit dropping by 20% or multiply by 0 0.8 to get that effect. Now when production doubles again, we see another 20% drop in the average time per unit. So 80 times 0 0.8, 64. Then when we produce 8 units doubling again, multiply by 0 0.8, we get 51.2. Friends, that is how you answer the ACCA question, explain how the 80% learning curve was calculated. Well, the way the learning curve would be calculated, first thing that we need to do is record the total time per unit. Okay, then we calculate the average time per unit when production doubles, and then we can see a constant drop, right? So that is how we work backwards from the total time to the average time per unit to observe a learning curve in effect. And friends, we see that the learning rate when we made these dumplings was 80%. Okay, friends, with that information, let's try a past exam question. Here it is on the screen. Hit pause. Give it a try on your own, and then start the video up again when you're done. Let's try it together. A company predicted the learning rate would be 80%. The actual learning rate was 75%. Before we do anything, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, unit number one, average time per unit, is 100 when we make the first one. We make the second one, 80% learning curve. Unit number two, the average time per unit is 80. However, we got 75%, so 75 for the second one. That's a good thing when we go faster. That means our cost per unit will be lower. That's a good thing. So which of these statements is positive, which would have a, a beneficial effect? Unexpected problems, no, that would make us go slower. Changes to the laws where our guys take more breaks, that means we would go slower. Number of new employees was lower than expected, that means we have more experienced employees who will go faster. That explains the 75%, that means the answer is C, one only. Guys, let's try another question. The last one was easy. This one is more challenging. This is a calculation question on the learning curve. And let's look at the theory, then we'll do it lickety-split. How long would it take the design engineer to complete the sixth job? Well, if we sketch out what's happening here, we put our units in the x-axis. So we need to understand the total time to make six units. If that's the units here, the total time will be on the y. Okay, so we have some learning curve in effect and total time for six would be here. Okay. Then we're going to calculate the total time to do five units. And the total time for five will be lower than the total time for six, wouldn't it? And the time to make number six would be the difference between the total time to make five and the total time to make six. So step one, get the total time to make six units. Step two, total time to make five units, subtract one from the other, and that is the time to do number six. Now, here's the exam tip. This is a laborious calculation with your handheld calculator. So write the key information down in the scratch pad. That's when we're working in section A or B. Then you go to the navigator 
and you move forward to section C and you find a blank spreadsheet in which you will do the work. So let's read the story and find the key information. 75% learning rate. Time for number one was five, right? That's five. And they actually gave us this learning factor, but let's pretend they didn't give us that. If we did not have that, we could still answer the question. Now, once you've recorded this information in the scratch pad, jump to section C and do the work in the spreadsheet. It will save you a lot of time. Okay, so let's do that together in the spreadsheet. Friends, I recorded the important information in the scratch pad and I used the navigator to zip forward to a blank spreadsheet in section C. I've written down in the spreadsheet the info that I need, but you could just keep it in the scratch pad. So the first thing we're going to do is turn that learning rate into that learning index. And the formula they give you in the exam, but you can even memorize it, that's equal to the logarithm of the learning rate over the logarithm of the number 2. And look how fast we can do this. All we have to do is come into cell B3 and just open up with an equal sign, equals the log of the learning rate. I've got it right there. Look at that. Cell B2 over the log of the number 2, logarithm of 2. And let's clean that up with a light format, two decimal places. And that is that learning rate as an index. And there it is, rounded to the same precision that we saw in the question. Now that we have that, we're going to use this formula to get the average time per unit. And that is equal, well, the formula is y is equal to ax to the power, using that caret symbol of b. Now, just quickly, look at what's happening there. You remember a total cost equation. On the x-axis, we have our production, our units, our activity. On the y-axis, we had our total cost. And we had a linear equation moving up, right? y is equal to a plus bx. Total costs are equal to the fixed costs plus the variable cost times the x. Now, if we express it with like this, y is equal to ax to the power of b. Now we have an exponential growth. So that would be a curve going up, wouldn't it? If we make b negative, then we get a downward sloping curve. Okay. Now, the learning curve cannot go on forever. Just be aware of that, right? It has to reach a steady state. Otherwise, it would start curving downwards, and we can't have negative time per unit. Time per unit has to always go up a little bit. All right, now that we see what that formula is all about, in the exam, I'm just going to write this. Total time for 6, total time for 5, time for number 6. That is my little template. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to get the average time for 6. When we make 6, that's going to be equal to A. That's time for number 1, 5. Okay, multiplied by 6 to the power of the learning rate. And they gave it to us in the story. So let's just use the negative 0 0.415 given to us in the story okay then we can do total for 6 would be equal to the average time per 6 multiplied by 6 let's clean this up it's looking a bit messy I'll come here put it to two decimal places 
All right, we've got the total time for six now, and we can set cell E5 equal to this. Okay, now I copy these figures, just right, and I'm gonna just change out the sixes to fives. Yes, I know what you're thinking. We could make a nice, elegant financial model and do this faster with variables in cells, but guys, it's the exam, we don't have time. So now we're making five units, so I change that six to a five in that equation there. It's five times five. And I come down here and I change that six to a five. Okay. And I set cell E6 equal to the total time for five. And the total time for six will be equal to the 14 minus the 13. Guys, let's be more precise. Let me put some formatting there, 1.44. Friends, if we zip back to the exam question, we see the answer is B, 144.2. Now, if you are a performance management rock star, you could have solved the question faster if you had kept your wits about yourself and you stepped back and you looked at the big picture. Look at this. We calculated the average time for six units and we said that that was the 238. If we come back to the distractors in the question, the first one took five. So it can't be answer D. The average time per unit when we make six is two, three, eight. That's this option here. That's the average when we make six, okay? So units one, two, and three are gonna be bigger than the average. That would, so, that, so it can't be C. Units four, five, and six would be lower than the average time per unit. Because remember the time per unit is dropping right as we go that's the number that's the time per unit right so that is becoming smaller as the units increase the time per unit is dropping so b is the only possible option friends there you have it the learning curve easy question difficult question made easy with the spreadsheet tool guys Steve signing out. Good luck on your upcoming performance management exam.